Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the VSS buffer module for a 1993 Chevrolet Suburban 2500. Honestly, this is going to work on any of the light duty or heavy duty full size trucks of this era. Mine just happens to be a 2500 Suburban. So, what's going on with this truck is when you put it into reverse, it does okay. Uh, it kind of like stumbles and has a problem, but it, it doesn't stall. And then when you put it into drive, it immediately just stalls and turns off. So I'm thinking that the VSS itself is fine because the Speedo works, but the buffer module itself that actually handles that information and sends it to the ECM is having some sort of problem. So I'm gonna replace this VSS and see if that fixes us up. With all that out of the way, let's jump in. So before we start work, I figured I'd show you exactly what the Suburban is doing and why I think it's the problem I think it is. So. I have my uh, truck here up on the lift so it's not on the ground and you can see when you put it into reverse, it goes into reverse, no problem. You can even push the brakes. There's a little bit of a idling problem but not bad so I know the torque converter is functioning in that gear but watch what happens when I go into drive. It just stalls and dies. So I think it is and it has a code for a VSS, but if it was a VSS problem, the speedometer wouldn't work at all. What I think the problem is, is the buffer module, which is located right in the glove box. So let's replace that and see if it helps. So before we do anything with electronics, computers, or anything like that, let's go ahead and disconnect the battery by grabbing an eight millimeter socket or a wrench and undoing that bolt just there. And make sure that you never touch the negative and positive with your wrench or, you know, fastener apparatus. If the bolt falls out, that's okay. Just go ahead and fetch it. We're gonna need that guy later, so put that in a safe spot. And uh, now we can actually do some work on plugging in our DRAC module. Okay, now I'm setting the passenger seat and I've already opened our glove box. Pretty sure you guys know how to do that. I'm gonna take a seven millimeter socket and remove the four screws that hold the liner inside this cubby. And it looks like I'm missing one. So it is only three for me, but there'd be another one just down here. So the glove box liner is sort of also held in by the supports that hold the glove box door from just flipping down into your lap. And the way you get rid of those is you either take a standard screwdriver or this nice body clip puller tool, link down below in the description, and you just get the top out. Like that and the whole thing should come with it. See, once you pull the plunger kind of out of the body of the clip, this part can collapse and come out of the hole. So, and I'll cover how to put that back when we are putting the whole glove box together. And there's two of those, there's one on each side, so go ahead and do that per bolt. The next thing we can do is worry about our glove box light. Just pop that out of the way, because I think these housing, these legs on this housing can actually keep it in place. There we go. Excellent. That was not bad at all. So now we have access to our uh, BSS buffer module, or sometimes called a DRAC module, and it is right here. It's held in with like Velcro that's long since given up the goose, um, but here it is. That's what it looks like. And we can just unplug that by depressing the safety and wiggling that connector, both those connectors out. And I'm fairly certain this module is bad. Now they don't make these new. You can't just go to Rock Auto or Amazon or Advanced Auto Parts or something like that and get a new one of these. So I've gotten one off eBay. It's they told me it's tested working, but who knows if it if it works for me, it'll probably work for you. And I'll leave the link down below in the description of the exact seller I used. It they seemed very very good. So let me go get that. So here is our new used one that uh, supposedly works. New, hopefully works. Used, hopefully doesn't. And that just plugs back in how we found it. Make sure you plug it all the way in until you hear that nice click. This wiggling inside the housing is pretty normal. The stock one did it as well. Just make sure that both of those make that nice good click. And then you can just kind of stash it down. You know how you found it. It's not super critical. 
Uh, it's probably going to be fine. And then we can just replace our insert, put the bottom in first, lean the top back into its position, replace our 7mm screws. There we go, finally has three, so that's all it's getting. So to reinstall the glove box lid strap, we're going to have the body of the clip completely empty and then stuff the body into its home. So it'll look like that. And then you're gonna take this plunging piece and just insert it, and there you go. It's all done, just do that for the other side as well. And then we can replace our negative terminal. It's a good idea to touch the negative terminal to the battery, just to make sure it doesn't spark and get crazy, because if it does, you gotta let off, but this one's totally fine. Just make sure you start that guy by hand. You don't want to cross thread it. And then we'll just tighten them up. And there's really no torque spec, just, you know, wrist tight is adequate. Okay, here we are in the same situation we were before, except now I'm on the ground, because I'm confident that this is going to work. It doesn't really matter either way. So before, going to reverse. Now it doesn't have kind of that idling problem. My foot's on the brake, so it's not going to move. Neutral did fine before, but remember when I put it in a drive, the thing would just stall and dive. Let's check it out. Works totally fine. I'll roll forward a little bit. You can see the Speedo working. So I call this truck fixed. That is how to replace the VSS module, sometimes called a uh, DRAC module in a 1999 Chevrolet Suburban. Uh, this is really as easy as it gets and it fixed the issue. So if you have a similar issue to this, I would try that VSS buffer. These old trucks aren't really you know, equipped with a computer intelligent enough to tell you what exactly is going on. So you kind of have to do a little bit of detective work and this is where mine led to me and it fixed our problem. If you found this video helpful at all, please consider giving it a like or subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.